Good morning, good morning, City Church. You are all welcome to today's service. And for our brothers watching us online, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Depending on the time zone, you are all welcome. Um, I would like to share some few information with you before we start. Uh, if we look behind us, we have a table there with um, some hot coffee and hot tea. Please feel free, make yourself uh, comfortable, okay? And then also, um, we have some other good news about what the Lord is doing in our midst in this church. On the 30th and 31st of July, we have um, some baptism that took place. That is 41 people were baptized. And then uh, when we add that to the previous baptism, we have in total 803 baptism right from January till 31st of July. Let's give a hand of applause to the Lord for what he's doing in our midst. And then um, regarding decisions, that is people who give their life to Christ, we have 159 people giving their life to Christ on the 30th and 31st of July. And when we sum it up to, that's from January to 31st July, we have 4,148 people giving their life to Christ. Let's give a hand of applause to the Lord for what he's doing. Amen. Please, let's be on our feet for a word of prayer before we start the service. Heavenly Father, we thank you, we bless you, we adore you for all that you have done for us, for all that you are doing. At this very moment, as we are gathered in front of you, before your throne, we ask that you come and take over the service. You come and lead the way. We ask that you send the Holy Spirit to come and take over throughout the service so that the end glory and honor, praise and adoration will be given unto you. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Amen. Let's worship. Good morning, church. Can you stand up and praise with us? Let's go. I was buried beneath my shame. Who could carry that kind of weight? It was my tongue till I met you. I was breathing but not alive. All my failures I tried to hide. You was my tongue. Till I met you. Can you sing with us? You call my name. Then I ran out of that grave. Out of the darkness into your glorious day. You call my name. And I ran out of that grave. Out of the darkness into your glorious day. Now your mercy has saved my soul. Can you say now your freedom? Now your freedom is all that I know. The old may you. Jesus, when I met you, when you called my name, and I ran out of that grave, out of the darkness, into your glorious day, you called my name, and I ran out of that grave. Out of the darkness into your glorious day.
Do you remember the day that Jesus saved you? Because yeah. I remember. I need you rescue, my sin was heaven, but chains break at the weight of your glory. I need you shelter, I was an orphan, now you are calling me a citizen of heaven. When I was broken, you were my healer, now your love is the air that I'm breathing. I have a future, my eyes are open. Cause then you call your name Then I ran out of that grave Out of the darkness Into your glorious day You call my name Then I ran out of that grave Out of the darkness to your glorious day. There's nothing good in me You are love, you are love On this place for all to see You are light, you are light When the darkness closes in You are hope, you are hope You have covered all my sins You are peace, you are peace when my fear is crippling. You are true, you are truth, even in my wandering. You are joy, you are joy, you're the reason that I sing. You are life, you are life, and your death has also sin. So we say, and oh, I run into your arms, I run into your arms, the riches of your love will always be enough, nothing compares to your embrace, light of the world forever. We go louder. You are more, you are more than my words will ever say. You are Lord, you are Lord. All creation will proclaim. You are here, you are here. In your presence I am whole. You are God, you are God. All of wealth I'm letting go. And no, I'm running to your arms. I run into your arms. The riches of your love will always be enough. Nothing compares to your embrace. Light of the world forever reign. I run into your arms. I run into your arms, the riches of your love will always be enough, nothing compares to your
Jesus. Can you say it? My heart will sing. Say no other name. No other name. Jesus. 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 My heart will sing. No other name. Jesus. Jesus. City Church. How are we, family? Are you good? Good, good. So now I'm going to start talking about uh, with you about tithes and offerings, and I'd like to read a verse of the Bible. So, in 2 Corinthians 9:7, is written, "You should each give then as you have decided, not with regret." Or out of a sense of duty. For God loves the one who gives gladly. And God is able to give you more than you need. So that you always have all that you need for yourselves. And more than enough for every good cause. As the scripture says. He gives generously to the needy. He kindness lasts forever. We serve a generous God, a generous Lord, and we trust Him. When we trust Him with our time, we start to serve Him in His home. When we trust Him with our mouths and our knowledge, we start to te teach in a church. And we, when we start to trust Him with our resources, with our money, we start to give Him the tithes and the offerings. So it's all about trust. When we are talking about this moment of tithes and offerings, we have to trust the Lord that He will provide us with more than we need, so we can help us, helps each other. We can help the brother who is needing. We can help the church to grow and to reach more people. It's all about trust. When when you can trust the Lord, you can start to give in. When you trust the Lord, we can start to be generous, as the Lord is with us. You know, sometimes we heard the term red flag being tossed around a lot. People talk about, oh, if my boyfriend or girlfriend or wife or something do this or that, it's a red flag. But we have to watch out for our own feelings for red flags. So when you start to feeling, oh, I don't have enough. Oh, I cannot give my tithes. I cannot bring offers to the Lord because I will be uh, missing something so that's a red flag so you watch out watch out your heart we have to take care of this because our Lord is generous and we have to be generous as well is what he's expecting from us okay so right now in your screen is showing yours 
accounts or numbers so you can give your tithes if you're not from here if you are from abroad and if you're here with us today we have our boxes here in the front and at the back you can give your tithes by your uh, debit card okay so now I'm gonna pray so the Lord will bless us today bless our tithes and offerings but never forget watch out for your feelings because you have to be aligned with God so if you serve a generous God, you have to be generous. If you serve a good God, you have to be good. If you serve a trustworthy God, you have to trust Him. Okay? Lord Father, thank you so much for this day. Thank you so much for this church. Thank you so much for our brothers who are here with us. Thank you so much for this worship that you praise for you today. Thank you so much. We are, have so much gratitude in our hearts for you. Lord, help us to be generous as you are with us. Help us to be giving as you are giving. Help us to be selfless as you are selfless. Thank you so much for what you have done with us, what you have done in this church, what you have done with our lives, God. Help us to trust you, trust you with your time, trust you with your knowledge, trust you with your resources, with your mouths, with your friends, with your families. Help us to trust you, not in parts of our lives, but with our whole lives. Thank you so much for this day. And bless every tithe and offering that's bring for your altar today. Thank you so much, God. And bless you all. Amen. Like I'm 
I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. You may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. You may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Oh, you may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. You may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. And this is how I fight my battles. And this is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how. Can we give Jesus a round of applause? Come on, guys. Come on. Good morning. Good morning. Now we're talking. How are you feeling today? How's your expectation for this morning? I love this moment. Don't you love how beautiful all of this looks like? Ah, oh, this is just, it's just beautiful. It's just amazing. There's an invitation before you today. You can choose to take your seat at the table and enjoy the table. I want to read with you a verse. It's a very, very famous one. Maybe you know it by heart. This is one of the first ones I've ever heard when I was starting to get to know the Lord and get to know Jesus and all the things he did for me. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. This is John chapter 3 verse 16. It's, it's, it's just beautiful. I'm here to tell you today that it's a love story. It's all about love. It's all about the love that God demonstrated through Jesus being nailed on the cross. But it's also about a love that did not stop with the cross. Amen? It's a love that transcended time and space and has reached your heart today here this morning. If you're watching us online, whatever the time you're watching us, and it just, it just, it's reaching you right now. The real question is, how are we responding to this love? How are you responding to this love? How is your heart responding to this love? How is your mind and your soul responding to this love? How are you responding to this invitation to the table? This moment, like I said, I love it. Um, by the way, you can grab the element at the, ent at the entrance if you didn't grab it. It's a very special moment. And um, if you are baptized in waters in any um, evangelical church, and if you've given your life to Jesus and been baptized, you're invited to take part in this moment. And the reason we do this just because we're following Jesus' commitment. It's not about um, you feeling isolated or something like that. Please don't take it like that. This is an invitation. We want you to take part with us. We want you to take part with us. But this is about committing and belonging to the family and to the body of Christ. I love how Jesus laid it all down. He just gave himself completely so that we could be here today 
talking about his love, talking about how grateful we are. And I really, really, really want you to raise your expectation, really get your hopes up. Not because of me, not because we have good worship or a, a beautiful thing that we do. But I want you to raise your expectation because Jesus is here. He is here. He's alive. And that's why we do what we're doing right now. To celebrate his life, his victory over death. And that same victory that establishes our identity as children of God. Amen. But this moment should not be taken lightly. I will give you now a few moments for you to really go through your heart and your soul. And if you have to forgive someone, please do it. If you have to ask for forgiveness to God or someone else, do that right now. If you can't talk to the person, talk to the person afterwards. But really, don't let this hinder you in having this moment with the Lord. Don't take it lightly. It's a privilege that we are sitting at the table, not because we're the only ones invited, but because we said yes. Amen. So I'll give you a few seconds for you to pray, and then I'll pray. So go through your heart, really. If you have to forgive someone, please do. If you have to ask for forgiveness, please do. Jesus, we want to say thank you. Thank you because in you we have everything that we need. And right now, Father, we, as we're examining our hearts, we ask you to forgive us, forgives us of our sins. Please forgive us of the ones that we, we're not even aware that we're doing it. Shed your light over it. Teach us how to do it the right way. Speak to us, Holy Spirit. If we have to forgive someone, we forgive this person right now, Father, in Jesus' name. And if we, ask, if we have to, to ask forgiveness to someone, show us. Show us the person's name, the person's face, so that we can get straight with you now and then we can talk to the person afterwards. We really, really, really want to enjoy this moment to the full, Father. So we ask you to come and align our hearts speak to us in Jesus name in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 Paul says for I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you the Lord Jesus on the night he was betrayed took the bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. You can take the bread. Jesus, thank you. Thank you for the body that was broken, that replaced our body on the cross. Thank you because, because of your stripes, we are healed. Thank you because when you took our place, when you switched seats, you went through a journey that actually, in a destination that actually belonged to us. So we thank you right now, Jesus. We thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Our hearts are overflowing with gratitude. Thank you, Jesus. We cannot thank you enough. And right now we say yes. Yes to the truth that we are healed in your name. We say yes to everything that you have poured out over us through the sacrifice of your body on the cross. We say yes to that. In Jesus' name, we consecrate this element to you. Amen. You may take from the bread.
In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Jesus, we, we just put our hearts before you now. We ask you to cover us with your grace, with your love. The same love that took you to that cross on a personal sacrifice. Shedding the last to the last drop of blood. We consecrate this element to you by saying yes to this covenant. We say yes, yes to everything that comes with it our new identity, back to the plan A, as children of God. We say yes to the freedom that comes from serving you, from recognizing you as our Lord and Savior. The freedom that comes from a life that's truly redeemed by you. We say yes to all of that. Thank you, Jesus, for not holding back, not even a drop. We say thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may take from the cup. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Jesus, we want to praise you now. We want to praise you because of who you are. You're the Son of God. You're the one and only God, Prince of Peace. You're Emmanuel. You're God with us. That's who you are, and you're here right now. So we just kneel before you, Father, by saying, come and have your way. We, we humbly surrender to you, Father. You're the only one worthy of all praise. So we praise you. We give you all the honor. We give you all the glory because you are the only one worthy of it. We praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen.
Because of you, Jesus, it's all Because of your love that my soul will live And so, because of you, Jesus, it's all Because of you, Jesus, it's all Because of your love that my soul Isn't that beautiful? Can I give Jesus a round of applause for their lives? You guys are awesome. Praise the Lord. Thank you. How is your heart? You may be seated. How is your heart this morning? Really? What's your expectation for what's going to happen? What's your, your expectation for, for the day? It's pretty cozy out there, isn't it? I don't know where you're watching us from, but here in San Jose, it's kind of, it's a good day for you to stay in bed, I would say. Isn't that right? Thank you so much. Ah, oh, I love cozy mornings. I love to do things when it's not super, super hot out there. Wow. Today we have a special guest here. As Oliver is jumping around. It's good how kids can bring life to a house. Isn't that right? Yes or no? If you don't know this for a fact, one day you will know, and you're going to remember me right now. They bring life and happiness and joy. But peace walks out of the room. It just, it just vanishes. Peace is always gone. As soon as a kid is here, peace is gone. But you have so much life, so much joy. It's beautiful. It's, you know, it's, it's, as everything in life, it's always a give and take relationship, you know. You take a lot of joy and a lot of happiness, but you give away a lot of peace. So you have to find peace in the Lord. Amen? All right. That was a good icebreaker. So let's um, jump to some communications before we dive into the message. Number one, and one of the most important things ever, small groups or city groups, whatever you prefer to call it. We call it city groups. We have two happening nowadays. Number one, Tuesday evening, 7 p.m., my place. You're more than welcome to come, really. Just talk to me. You can send us a message on Instagram. We, we use the church's Instagram, the ministry Instagram, to, as a communication point. So if you're watching us online, there's another small group or another city group, Wednesday evenings at 9 p.m., which is 100% online. We do have some folks connecting from United States, so that's why it happens a little bit late, later than in, on Tuesday, not so early. So you can choose either one to connect, but I want to invite you and really encourage you to connect. You know, don't, don't just listen. Really come and join, and, and, and you can enjoy a great time of fellowship, a lot of people sharing. It's, it's always great, you know, good food. It's always, you know. Take the hint. It's good food. You should come. It's always special. Always good. You, you come for the food, but you stay for the people. How does that sound? Amen? That sounds like a plan, right? That's awesome. Now, another thing is uh, we have our outline for today's message on the church's app. So if you don't have the church app, you have to go to the Play Store or Google Play Store, Apple Store or Play Store, and you can download the church app there. Just type in Igreja da Cidade, and you can find it. We do have both um, in English and Portuguese, 
So you can download both if you're learning English or if you're learning Portuguese. And if you're connecting us from online, um, you just go to Play Store and Apple Store. You can find it out there. So there's a way for you to also follow the message and reading the notes that will help you. If for some reason I talk too fast because I get excited, I apologize in advance. So amen. Without no further ado, we are in a series of messages called Back to the First Love. How many of you watched at least one of the previous messages? Okay, okay, that's great. Um, I strongly encourage you to go to YouTube and catch up with the other messages that came before. It's only four, this is the number four, so it's pretty easy. I bet you can do it within a week. Just listen to it, you know, set it up on YouTube while you're doing your, your things. Just turn on, pl plug it in, and you can listen to the message. And I encourage you to do that because it's been an amazing journey. It's, it's just simply beautiful. It's been amazing. Really enjoy the opportunity. Just, just, it, it's an opportunity that we have. All the messages are on YouTube. So you can just go there, listen to it, enjoy it, and it's going to be amazing to your life as well. I bet it's going to be a huge blessing. Revelations 2 verse 4. This is the verse that inspired this series of messages. It says, yet I hold this against you. You have forsaken the love you had at first. Let us pray. Jesus, we say thank you. We thank you for the opportunity and the privilege of being here at your house, listening to your word, worshiping you freely. Thank you because this is a privilege. Right now, we ask you to come and talk to us. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Father God. You guys, you're the main guest here. We're doing this to listen to your word, to learn more from you, to get closer and closer to you. So right now, we consecrate this time to you, Father. Use me as just a vessel. Come and, and, and speak truly your word and, and speak to me first and then flow to your people, Father. In Jesus' name we pray and we thank you. Amen. So today's message... It's called Time to Restore the Passion for the Word. You know, we've talked about a bunch of stuff. We talked about time to restore the relationship with the Father, time to restore the passion for souls, time to restore the love for the bride, which is the church, and then time to restore the passion for the Word today. This verse in Revelations 2.4, as it says, you have forsaken the love you had at first. This is the moment where... Jesus is showing how unease he is with the church of Ephesus. And then he's basically saying, guys, you have grown cold. You just, you don't care about the relationship you have with me anymore. Or it's almost like when your spouse or someone that you love and hold very dearly to your heart texts you and say, hey, I miss you. Have you ever get a got a text like that? Well, I do sometimes. And it should bother us. If it's not bothering you, it should. Really, it should. There's no middle ground here. There's no halfway there. There's no gray area. It's either yes or no. And when we read this verse and when we're looking at this whole series of messages... This is Jesus talking to us, and he's talking to me, to me as well. Like I said many times here before, I'm no special pe person. I'm not, no enlightened being or whatever. I'm just a human being like yourself. And this series should be a wake-up call to us. Almost like Jesus texting, texting us and saying, hey, I miss you. You know, I want to spend time with you. I want to have quality time with you. Build our relationship. I really don't know how is your life right now. Your life could be perfect. Could never have been better. But when we talk about our relationship with Jesus, it can always get better. Always. 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 There's always room for us to grow a bit more. There's always room for us to love a little bit more. 
And if we feel too comfortable, today's message is the answer to that problem. Because when we love the Word of God and we spend time in the Word of God, the closer we get to it, more we come to realize how in bad shape we are. <laughs> I don't know if you ever had that feeling. Sometimes just reading some verses, I'm like, man, I'm just so terrible. Like, I'm just failing at this. This is, all come again, this area? I mean, ah, I don't know about you. But really, really, if you're spending time in the presence of the Lord and reading his word, and you're not even feeling a little bit bothered, or there's not something here messing you up to change, do more, or do better, you should read the Bible again. <laughs> because that's all about, like, this is what the Bible is for, to show us who God is. And the closer we get, not only we know more about God, but we know more about ourselves. I love this process, this journey of tagging along with God. Okay, God, let's learn more about you. And then he laughs at us and he goes like, yeah, yeah, just more about me. Uh-huh. And then the closer we get to him, it's the, like we're getting closer and closer to a mirror. And we are seeing ourselves and our imperfections. That's how it works. That's the purpose of the Bible, to reveal God to us and his perfect plan of love and his character, and then set the standard for us to follow. Psalm 119, verse 11, it says, I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. You know, every area of your life that you're still struggling with something, with sin or you have a problem that never goes away, never backs off on you. That area needs more of the Word of God, needs more of its light. You need to pray more about God, show me in your Word something that is palpable regarding this subject. And read it again and again and again. God is not inside the Bible, but the Bible is the compass we need to find him. As you're reading through the scriptures, it's beautiful how God starts to unveil himself to us. It's, it's just, I don't know if you ever had this experience. Sometimes you've read a verse, this, like the verse I've read it before here, this, um, just earlier today. John 3, 16. It's just so common, so Ordinary. I don't know. The word of God is never ordinary. But sometimes, I don't know about you. If it suits you, amen. But for, my, for me, for myself, sometimes there are those verses that everybody uses, everybody quotes, and they fall into this bucket of ordinary. I don't know. Let's find like a, a really different verse, you know, like as if I'm showing off my knowledge of the Bible. Come on. I don't know. But God takes me to the process coming back to the, you know, look at this verse, how beautiful it is. Look at John 3.16. For God so loved the world. I mean, that's, that's just so beautiful. That's a poem, and a poem on itself. It's just beautiful. In today's, the opportunity that we have to regain this passion for the Word of God. The Bible is the Word of God. Therefore, God's vo it's God's voice guiding us people blinded by sin to finding him. It's almost like you're in a room, pitch black, blindfolded, and then you hear a voice saying, keep going forward, now stop, turn right, go straight ahead again, two more steps. It's that voice in the dark. And I don't know if you've ever been in a situation. I've been in situations in my life where I was totally in the dark, couldn't see a thing in my professional area, my professional career, personal life, relationships, many areas. But every time I would go to God, I would listen to the voice guiding me towards the solution, towards finding him. 
Psalm 119, 105. Your word is a lamp for my feet, a light on my path. I love this one. Jeremiah 15, 16. When your words came, I ate them. They were my joy and my heart's delight, for I bear your name, Lord God Almighty. Isn't it kind of funny? But that shows a passion. When your words came, I ate them. In other words, they sustained me. I know a lot of people, a lot of people that wish they had the privilege you have of going to the bookstore and purchasing a Bible and taking it home. A lot of people. They wish they had this privilege. I've seen so many people with a passion for the Bible, for the Word of God. In many countries that they're persecuted for being Christians, that this love they have, it just make, made me embarrassed. I have a pack of Bibles at my place. I'm like, there's a lot to them. And they just love that tiny little part of the Bible they have. And they love it to the point of risking their lives. Boy, that made me feel terrible, honestly. I'm like, oh God, I'm doing it all wrong. Because they treasure this, not only as knowing their value, but because it's something that it's physically, it's not ordinary. In other words, we're so used to downloading an app, open the Bible on a, on a mobile app, or going to the bookstore, getting a Bible, walking down the street and someone giving you a, a New Testament thingy. I don't know. We're so used to it. It's just so common, right? It's easy to get it. And this may trap us into this lie that everything in the book is common because it's just a common book when it's not. Why is the Bible relevant to your life? First, if you're following it on, uh, on the outline, you can, feed, uh, you can see it there, topic number A. The Bible is the word of God. Psalm 119, 89. Your word, Lord, is eternal. It stands firm in the heavens. Second reason, why is the Bible relevant? Because the Bible is perfect and without limitations. Psalm 19, verse 7. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The statu statutes of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. C, the Bible will give you timeless principles for practical things in life. James 1.25, but whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they have heard, but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. Listen to this. This is knowledge, wisdom. Next, why is the Bible so relevant? Because the Bible provides everything you need. Any type of advice. Psalm 107, verse 20. He sent out his word and healed them. He rescued them from the grave. Last but not least in this part, the Bible reveals enough for you to live fully. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 and 17. All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Now here's the challenge. How do we build this love and relationship with the Bible, with the Word of God? There's a few steps here. And then we're going to dive into looking at the example of a king from the Old Testament who understood the value of God's Word even when he didn't have it like we do. And that changed everything. So now how do we... Go about this journey in understanding and living, truly living close to the Word of God. First, you have to read it. Read the Word of God. Reading the Word is the first step to accessing God's mysteries. So this is about stepping into a new realm, entering into a new realm. 
And if we look at um, some verses in James and, and Third John, when it talks about a man who is spirit-led. In other words, his spirit and not his soul drives him. It starts right here at this very moment. Let me tell you this. Your soul, so you're, you're a, a being that has three layers or three parts, whatever you, the suit, whatever you want to call it. You're a spirit because you're formed by God. So mainly you're a spirit. So you have a spirit, a soul, and the body. When, we talk, when the Bible talks about death and it, eternal death and, and all of that, it's not talking about your body. Your body will pass away. But real death is eternity without God's presence. God is heaven. His presence is heaven. Is that making sense? You guys with me? So when John and everybody else is talking about a man that is spirit-led, it's about understanding that your soul follows your spirit. And the catch here is, as you're growing, your soul, it's like a historian. It's, it, it records everything that happens to you. Therefore, the problem that comes with people telling you that you're dumb, that you're worthless, that all of that, all of those things, they're not true. They're not true. But because your soul is there since the very beginning, writing down everything that is happening, it's going to write down so many times that this lie will become true. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? So your soul now starts to struggle when you know, when, when your spirit gets connected with Father God through recognizing, okay, now I recognize that Jesus died for me, so I accept him as my Lord and Savior. If, if you did not grow in a home that tries to model God's family the best way possible, maybe your soul is already polluted with many historical facts. They're historical. They happen to you, but they're not true. Are you guys with me? When you're at that point, the Spirit of God comes and fills you up. Amen. That's amazing. You go to the Word, to the Bible, of, and, and you start like, wow, this is beautiful. God loved me. God loves me since the beginning. Look at what Jesus did. People got healed. And that's when the first thing hits you. Your soul goes like, what do you mean people got healed? Did they go to the doctor? Did they go through a surgery, medicine, or treatment, or something? And you go like, wait, how did they get healed? You're reproducing that because your soul, as a historian, which is not, maybe you're already used to people being healed since you're, like, you're, very, you're born in a Christian home, you see those miracles. That's great because your soul will learn that as a true, a, a true thing. Now, when you're not used to those things, it's a challenge. And when we, we, when we bump into your identity, it gets even worse. Because as the Bible is saying, you are a beloved child of God. You're worthy of all things. Christ is seated above everything. Ephesians says that, 1.8 and then 2.7. And then it says that, therefore you are seated with Christ above everything else. Amen? But we're not. We're, we're, we're here. But how can we be here? But I'm here. And this is your soul. You're struggling, you're battling, because your soul is believing in a fact that happened. Someone calls you stupid, for example. Therefore, I am stupid. That's what your soul believes in. Because that person projected this so much on your head, and it was just recording everything that happened to you. Now you're in a struggle. And I love as we go through this process, as you're stepping into this new realm, you ask God, teach me, talk to me. And the Holy Spirit joins you in this battle as your spirit is battling your soul. Have you ever felt this? I've, I feel this every day. Sometimes I go like, oh, this, like things look bad. I'm not going to make it. It's so hard. And this is my soul screaming, 
We're so limited. We're not good at this. We're not going to make it. And then my spirit steps in. And here's the catch. If you're not reading it enough, if you're not stepping into this new realm, this reality can seem very distant. So as you're reading the Word of God, and then number two, as you're meditating the Word of God, this is your, you allowing the truth, the real truth from heaven, the reality of heaven, to step in you and change your soul, change your reality on your inside. Is it making sense? Are you guys with me? It's, it's, a, it's a hard battle. It's a hard process to abandon and tell your soul, hey, soul, trust me on this one. Your soul will scream and say, no, this is a problem. We're, we're not that person. We're going to get frustrated. Our feelings are going to get broken. We're going to get hurt. Don't do it. But your spirit as it's learning from the Word of God, as you're praying, as you're meditating, it tells you, no, we're going to change the atmosphere. We're going to change everything. That's when the clash happens. That's when the challenge arises. And you decide who will win. You're the one who decides that. You're going to decide if it's your spirit or if it's your soul. But how? It's who you're feeding who will be stronger, and that will determine the outcome of this battle. So you have to read the Word of God. This is when you start stepping into a new realm. You have to meditate in the Word of God. So you allow the Word to permeate every thought of yours. This is the metanoia process, changing everything inside of you. Then you pray the Word of God. So you start declaring what God has revealed to you during this prayer time. This is you, you changing the atmosphere. Then you memorize the word. You start, you write it down. I don't know. You start writing it down. So this is keeping it in your heart and your mind. This will help you to resist all of these attacks. So this is you building yourself up. You had to memorize many of the math and calculations, formulas and stuff. Some of you didn't, but you had to still. It was part of life. Yeah, I see you going like, no, I didn't. Yeah, it's part of life. Memorize the word of God. That those are the formulas for you to grow personally, professionally, in every area. And then you separate some time for you in solitude. Don't just separate time to read a book, but separate time to have an encounter with God. And he's going to bless you. Amen? Now, as we dive into... King Josiah's life. You can open your Bible in 2 Chronicles 34. We're going to read many verses from that chapter. We have King David. He ruled for 40 years. It was approved by God. He was known as a man after God's own heart. King Azah, he ruled for 41 years. And he removed all idolatry from Jerusalem. There's King Josiah. We're going to dive into his story. He ruled for 31 years. He repaired the temple of God, he united the people, and he renewed the covenant of Judah and Jerusalem with God. There's also King Hezekiah, tricky name. He ruled for 29 years, and he also did what was right before the Lord. And then there's King Azariah. He ruled for 52 years, and did what was right before the Lord. Only five kings on a long, 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 long story. Out of those five... We're going to find traits in King Josiah's story that will teach us how to love the Word of God. Josiah was eight years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem 31 years. He did what was right in the eyes of the Lord and followed the ways of his father David, not turning aside to the right or to the left. Number one, when we look at the story of Josiah, if you want to elevate your passion for the word of God, choose to seek God. Second Chronicles 34, verse 3. In the eighth year of his reign, so he was 16 years old. He became king when he was eight years old, and this is eight years after that. While he was still young, he was a teenager, he began to seek the God of his father, David. David. 
it's amazing. I've, I've spoken about this earlier, and this is the essence of it. When we seek God first, we find ourselves. This is amazing. This is amazing. You're seeking God, and you're finding out who you truly are. Reading the Bible without having the expectation of an encounter with God is frustrating. You know, back on the Old Testament, people, everybody was afraid of seeing God's face because they believed that they would die for seeing so much power and glory. Well, nowadays, there's a pastor who says that um, we need to read the Bible and read the Word of God to have an encounter with God every day and die every day because we need to die to ourselves to truly live for Christ. And I love this analysis. And this is the very core of understanding who we are. I need to reject myself because my soul does not believe in the absolute truth yet. It's in a process, the journey of believing and all of that. So we need to choose to seek God. This young man, he became king when he was eight. By the age of 16, he started changing. He started spreading reformation across all the kingdom. With 16 years old, he started seeking God. And he found his identity. He was a king. And he had to do things for his people. A lot of people nowadays, they're so lost in their identity that they cannot fix their own lives. I wish they could fix a kingdom. We need to seek God first. Then we will find ourselves in the word of God and truly learn from him. Number two, to elevate your passion for the word of God, you need to destroy the obstacles that hinder your intimacy with God. Second Chronicles 34, verses 3, the second part of verse 3, and the first part of verse 4. In his 12th year, he began to purge Judah and Jerusalem of high places, Asherah poles, and idols. Under his direction, the altars of the Baals were torn down. He cut to pieces the incense altars that were above them. Intentionality is required if we're seeking what's extraordinary. I'll say it again. Intentionality is required if what we're seeking is extraordinary. Regardless of what area of your life you're talking about. This is truthful, this is real, this is practical, this is real life. From your professional career to your personal life, your personal relationship is a relationship with the Father. You have to be intentional. You have to be intentional. Dwight Moody, he says that either this book, the Bible, will keep me away from sin or sin will keep me away from this book. You have to be intentional. Nowadays, you have Disney Plus, you have Netflix, you have Amazon Prime, you have Paramount, you have HBO Max, you have Star Plus. You can barely name and list all of the streaming services. Abroad, we even have more. All of those, they can take over your agenda in your free time. But they will do you no good. They will entertain you. But if you're not careful with your watching, they will even pollute your mind, contaminate your mind. You have to be careful. You have to be careful. And if you're seeking extraordinary, extraordinary things to happen in your life, having your life completely transformed to grow in your relationships and everything, you have to be intentional. Taking away everything that steals your attention. Josiah knew that those poles, those altars, those things, they were stealing away the people's attention. We have to do that. Take down the poles that we are idolatry in the place of God's word. To elevate your passion for the word of God. Number three, enhance your connection with the church. Second Chronicles chapter 34 verse 14 while they were bringing out the money that had been taken into the temple of the Lord, Hilkiah, the priest, found the book of the law for, of the word, I'm sorry, the book of the law of the Lord that had been given through Moses. How we are connected to the church 
will influence the passion we carry for the Word of God. This is the best place for you to learn who you are and put it into practice. The first problem we're going to treat here at the church is our hypocrisy. There's always room for another hypocrite. Welcome to the team. Hi. There's always room for us to treat the problems that we don't have. Come on. I've seen so many people, so many people saying that they don't go to church because it's filled with people that want their money. And though they are the most greedy person I've ever seen. I've seen so many people saying that they don't go to church because it's filled with people that pretend they don't have problems. I almost said, well, come on in. Looks like it fits you. <laughs> we all have problems. Everybody have problems. Everybody have problems. And our job is to show people out there that this is a place for you to recognize that you have problems and treat them. And this is the biggest challenge ever. Because if you truly connect to the church, not always is going to be comfortable and easy. But that's the catch. That's why we're here. Why do you go to the gym? To be comfortable and sit at a very cozy place and have your breakfast, have your coffee, or have some tea if you're British. Just relax and have a good time, you know. No. You go to the gym because you need to work out. Yes or no? If you know a gym where you're very comfortable, I'll join that. I don't like gym. And, uh, jokes aside, the catch is, why do we expect to go to church and feel comfortable and listen what we want to listen and all of that, knowing that it's a place that's supposed to take you closer to God and take care of that? We need to really start changing that mindset. The church is here to help us become more like Jesus, not to feel comfortable. At home, you're not always comfortable with your family. You have conflicts. You have to solve situations. This is the purpose of the church, to build us up. Number four, to elevate your passion for the word of God. Have respect for the word of God. 2 Chronicles 34, verse 18 and 19. Then Shaphan, the secretary, informed the king, Hilkiah, the priest, has given me a book. And Shaphan read it, uh, read, it, uh, read from it in the presence of the king. When the king heard the words of the law, he tore his robes. You know, when you respect, when you honor, when you fear the word of God, and when we talk about fear, it's not terror, it's not being scared of, but being respectful to. When you respect the word of God, understanding that it's God guiding your steps, that brings you honor. That can save you from so many troubles. So many troubles. I've seen so many situations where following God's principles and the word's principles, even when dealing with situations like this, let me read it with you. Genesis 3, 1. Now the serpent was more crafty than any other wild animals of, uh, that the Lord had made. The serpent said to the woman, did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, we may eat fruit from trees in the garden, but God did say you must not eat fruit from the tree that it's in the middle of the garden and you must not touch it or you will die. And then the serpent goes about changing the perspective over a very simple commandment of God. You will face situations where people will come, even your soul will come, and try to like, do you really think someone would mind you doing this? I think it's okay. My wife knows me. It gets to the point of me being annoying, like... Like annoying. There, I'll, I'll, I'll quote you a simple example. If we're driving here around the church and um, there's the, I don't know, elders parking lot or the um, handicapped people parking space and all that, that stuff. 
It could be like 2 a.m. I have this thing in me. I will not park there, not even for five minutes. Sometimes we kind of argue with that. She's like, just, just park here. Just like, it's 30 seconds. It's 2 a.m. Nobody's going to do it. It never happened 2 a.m. We're, we're sleeping at. Just an example. Follow, follow me on this one. But she goes like, nobody's going to see it. Nobody's going to bother. And I'm like, I can't. That's me. I can't. I'm not going to do it. It's simple. You're not supposed to do it. I'm not going to do it. But that's me. I've always been like this. And I'm not perfect. I'm not a saint. I'm just telling you how, how I work, how I operate. And this has helped me to do it across the board in many scenarios, especially in my relationship with God. Like, I can't do this. You know, I, and then um, once I heard someone saying, nobody will know it. And then I looked at the person and I said, it wasn't my wife, someone else. Nobody will know it. And then I said, well, I will know it. I will know it, that I'm doing it wrong or that I'm doing something that it's not nice. That's enough for me not to do it. So we need to understand and respect the word of God with this fear in our hearts. Because if you live by the principles of God's word, those principles will protect you. And I've seen myself in many situations, many times over and over. Because I have decided to follow this path, the Lord has blessed and protected me from many other problems and issues. Number five, to elevate your passion for the word of God. Seek to understand what God is talking to you. Second Chronicles 34, 21. Go and inquire of the Lord for me and for the remnant of Israel and Judah, and Judah about what is written in this book that has been found. This is about you moving from theory, theory into practice. Don't just see a verse and just, okay, I, I kind of get it. Oh, yeah. No, ask. The, the Bible is the only book where you're going to sit to read it and the author is going to join you. The Holy Spirit will be there just super excited, looking at you just like, come on, ask me, ask me. Yes, yes, just read that one. I love this one. Ask me. What does it mean? What is, ask me, ask me. I want to tell you. And sometimes you just go about it and read it and we forget it. And there was this piece of treasure and knowledge that could have just changed everything in our lives. And we go about leaving our day. Maybe that was the secret for you to change the atmosphere of your home and everything would be better. But you missed it. Ah. And it's not something that it's mystical. There won't be, like, maybe it will happen like this. And if it happens, tell me. It's going to be amazing. But an angel will come down and sit with you and, hi, beloved child of God. Let me explain it to you. And then he will draw it. Yeah, ah, that would be awesome, wouldn't it? But at least with me, it doesn't happen like that. With me, it's very practical. When I ask something, the words that ju they just highlight in my brain, images come, memories and this is how the Spirit talks to me. It all makes sense. I wish it was more angelical. Wouldn't it be nice? It would be, at least for me. But I love the fact that God is simple. God is simple. He wants to talk to you. We just have to listen. Number six, to elevate God's will, um, uh, to elevate your passion, obey God's will faithfully. Now, this is something that I love about it. Because God is simple, it is simple to obey. Yes or no? Sometimes yes, sometimes no. It's not always easy. Second Chronicles 34, 21b. Great is the Lord's anger that is poured out on us because of those who have gone before us have not kept the word of God. They have not acted in accordance with all that is written in this book. Do not allow sin to quench the fire of your passion for the word. It's simple. Some of the things that God is just telling you, it's as simple as don't walk beyond the cliff's edge. Or even simpler, don't get too close to the edge. If you're playing with sin, 
you will eventually fall. I see this with Oliver every day. He loves doing what's hard. So he goes about, you know, balancing himself. He was doing it last night. And I'm always close because I know that every time he's testing his limit or walking close to the limit, he will fall beyond the limit. It's a pure logic. But sometimes we do it with everything, with our personal lives, with our professional lives, pushing the limits. Don't do that. Obey God's will faithfully. He's telling you don't walk too, don't walk too close to the cliff. Don't do it. As we're getting close to the end, come on, guys. You guys there? Come on. To elevate your passion for the word of God, open your heart and let the word speak to you. Second Chronicles 34, 27. Because your heart was, was responsive and you humbled yourself before God when you heard what he spoke. This is a prophet talking to the king Josiah against this place and its people. And because you humbled yourself before me and tore your robes and wept in my presence, I have heard you, declares the Lord. There's the reason why God has given us the Bible is not that we are comfortable or that we read it and our conscience goes well, like, okay, I'm feeling well, I'm feeling good with my conscience. I'm going to the church on Sunday and I'm reading the Bible on a daily basis, like two to three verses. Okay, I can go about doing my life. The Bible is not here so you can feel comfortable and ease up your conscience about the wrong things that are happening. It's not. The Bible here is here to establish the patterns and how you need to relate with God. It's to tell you the story. Okay, Jesus died for you. He took your place. He was risen again. All of that has an eternal impact in your life. But you need to do this, this, and that to access this. This is why the Bible is here. Not just to make you feel comfortable. So you need to open your heart and let, it, and let the word of God speak to you. There's no point in keeping an open Bible at your home if your heart is closed to the word. It makes no sense. Read it. Live it. Eat it like Jeremiah did. Number eight, last but not least, to elevate your passion for the word of God. Announce the truth of the word of God to everyone. Second Chronicles 34, 30. He went up to the temple of the Lord with the people of Judah, the inhabitants of Jerusalem, the priests and the Levites, all the people from the least to the greatest. He read in their, he read in their hearing all the words of the book of the covenant, which had been found in the temple of the Lord. Let me ask you this, what do you do when you hear good news? I'll give you one example. There is a, there's a laptop giveaway. You just have to go to this place and you say, hi, I'm Gabriel. Here's your gift. They give you, I don't know, a MacBook Pro. Wow, that's awesome. You're gonna text your friends like, oh, come here. You just gotta say hi and tell them your name and they'll give you one. Isn't that right? Yes or no? If you're a good friend, you're going to share that good news. Yes or no? So when you read the Bible, when you see the word and you go like, Jesus has set me free of my problems. He has set me free from sin. I can restore the relationships that are broken. I don't have to worry about dying eternally. I'm going to live forever with Christ. I can restore my brokenness. I can be truly happy, have joy. I can get free from depression. We can pray and people get healed from cancer. This is better than a MacBook. Come on. You're changing a generation. Why are we not sharing it with others? Why are we not just screaming?
There's a song, I'm, I don't, I'm not sure if I remember the band. It's called Rooftops. Have you ever seen, have you ever heard of it? There's a place that, there's a moment that the girl screams, from the rooftops I proclaim that I am yours. I wish we would do that. Go crazy. Start screaming. Yes! Jesus is alive. And he wants to bless you. So many people are struggling out there. So many people lost not knowing who they are. Not knowing the love of God. How God loved them, loves them. What do you do when you have good news? What do you do? Would you stand up on your feet if you may? Second Chronicles 34, 31. The king stood by his pillar and renewed the covenant in the presence of the Lord to follow the Lord and keep his commands and decrees with all his heart and his soul and to obey the words of the covenant written in this book. I know it's not easy. It's not easy to, for some people it is, and that's why they're called evangelists. Easy as that. But it is easy for those who are in love, honestly. For those who are burning, those who are in love, Almost every time that I'm preaching here, I'm talking about my son. If you've watched me more than one time, you've noticed. I always talk about Oliver, talk about my wife. Why? Because I'm in love. I love them. I love them with every ounce in my body. If you're walking with him long enough, you already have reasons to be thankful because he's already restoring you. The more you say yes, the more you humble yourself and you say, come Lord and do it, the more he's going to do it and more testimonies you have to share. It's easy for those who are in love in love with Christ, you do it. King Josiah was in love. He was like, God, I need you. God, we need you. We're here before you, humbling ourselves because we need you. Out there, there are generations losing themselves because they're not passionate about your word. They are not passionate about you. But in this room, we have the passionate ones. I believe in you. I do. And if you don't believe in your passion and yourself, take my belief with you. I'll give it to you, my faith. I have faith in you. I believe you can do it. I believe you can allow this fire, this passion to grow within you so wildly that everything you do will reflect God's love towards others. I believe in you. I want to do something with you now, but only if you want to. I'm going to read a declaration here of choosing to commit with a covenant with the Lord. And if you want to take part with that, truly, if you want to, I want to invite you to come here to the front. This is between you and God. Everybody else, if you could close your eyes and bow your heads. 
If you want to take part in this covenant with the Lord, I'm going to read it here. I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to pray for myself. You can come to the front. But this is between you and God. God is calling us to establish this covenant of love with him and with his word. I choose to commit and to establish a covenant in the presence of God. To fully obey everything that is written in his word. Dedicating time to read, meditate, pray, memorize, and separate time to be alone with God. I declare that I will seek his presence insistently in his word. Removing any obstacles that may stop me from developing intimacy with God. I commit to be connected to the church of Christ in fellowship with my brothers to increase my fear for the word of God seeking to comprehend what he wishes for my life and faithfully obeying everything he reveals to me I will open my heart and will listen to the truth being revealed allowing the Holy Spirit to lead me to the Father's heart I will also proclaim with my mouth and with my life that Jesus Christ rules over my heart and will live every day of my life for the fulfillment of his will. Father, we're here not just doing a thing in a moment. No, we're here committing to you this covenant. We're saying yes to really, really embracing your word. Kindle this heart in us, Father. Light it up. The passion for your word, the passion for you. We wanna go back to the first love as we would do anything for you, Father. Take us back to the first love. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. You can go back to your seat. Now, there's an invitation that I, I need to extend to you. St please still remain with your eyes closed and your heads bowed. It doesn't matter if you're here for the first time, second time, 11th time. I really don't care about it. But I need to give you the opportunity. Do you want to invite Christ into your life? Do you want to say yes to Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Is there anybody here who wants to give their life to Jesus? Or maybe you've walked with Christ and you're like, oh God, for some reason I'm, a, I'm, I'm just broken or hurt. If that's you and you want to come back to Jesus, would you raise your hand? Is there anybody here who wants to either say yes to the Lord Jesus as your Lord and Savior or come back to him? This is between you and God. Is there anybody here? Amen. One last invitation to be baptized in waters. Is there anybody here who has taken one of the previous steps but not yet been baptized? And you want to be baptized and you say, well, I understand. I want to be baptized in waters. Is there anybody here who wants to be baptized? Amen. Let us pray. Jesus, thank you. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for all the amazing things that I know that you're doing in our midst. Right now, I bless everybody in this room, Father, to feel the joy of knowing you more and more and closer and closer. Bless them, renew them, bring a, a refreshment over them, a new anointing, Father, for a new season of growth, of thriving in your presence. In Jesus' name we pray, and I bless them to have an amazing week in your presence. Amen and amen. May the Lord bless you. Please come back next week. Bring someone with you, a friend or someone to come watch the service. It's going to be amazing as well. And um, make sure you catch up with the other messages from this series. Okay? I love you guys. God bless you. Have an amazing Sunday and an amazing week. I'll see you all. Bye. I was buried beneath 
my shame Who could carry that kind of weight It was my tongue Till I met you I was breathing but not alive All my failures I tried to hide It was my tongue Till I met you You called my name And I ran out of that grave Out of the darkness Into your glorious day You called my name And I ran out of that grave Out of the darkness Into your glorious day I needed rescue, my sin was heaven, but chance break at the weight of your glory. I needed shelter, now your love is the air that I'm breathing. Now your love is the air that I'm breathing I have a future, my eyes are open Can you call your name? And I ran out of that grave Out of the darkness Into your glorious day You call my name Out of the darkness into your glorious day. God bless you.